I, I really like, I'm scratching my head wondering how your channel has more subscribers than mine does. <laughs> With your terrible ideas. <laughs> What's up everybody, it's Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. Today I am on the shores of a 7,000 acre lake called Grapevine Lake, just outside of Dallas, Texas. And we've got an exciting, massive project to talk about. This undeveloped piece of property is the last stage of a much larger project, multi-use residential housing, retail, and hotels here in Flower Mound, Texas. What's so cool about this property is the way they've integrated nature, weaving throughout the entire complex and this is going to be the cherry on top. What we're looking at now is a large natural ravine leading down towards Grapevine Lake. This will be surrounded by restaurants on one side, there'll be office space on the other along with some green space right in the middle and they're going to be incorporating nature trails all along this shoreline of this property that are going to end up looking right at what we're going to build in this ravine. Today I'm joined by my good friend and water feature artist extraordinaire, Brian Helfrich from Team Aquascape. He's gonna walk us through the bottom of this water feature and some of the challenges we're going to be facing. So I'm standing at the bottom of a 30 foot slope that's gonna be the end of a 200 foot long stream. That's right, a 200 foot long stream with a 30 foot elevation. And down here at the bottom is gonna be one of two separate systems we're gonna do. The main reason we're doing two separate systems is because to push water from 200 feet away, 30 feet high, means massive, massive pumps. If we can split the distance in half, we can use more manageable size pumps, which actually helps with electric costs, maintenance, and other, other things. Down here, we would love to do a bigger reservoir, but we can't. We're very, very restricted because of these existing trees. One of the main things they want to preserve on the property are all of these trees that you see, which gives us less than a 12 foot area to move in between. So because of the small space here, we can only do about a 2,000 gallon reservoir down here. So we're gonna come in, build this up, into here, which reduces our excavation. I guess we're terrified of pulling out all these big giant boulders. We see this one, we see this one that's kind of buried in this area here, there's some up in there. We have no idea what's below the earth. From here, water's gonna get pushed up to kind of that grass area up in there. Right here, we're gonna do a bridge. The key thing with this bridge though, is to keep it as low as we possibly can. The main reason we wanna keep it low is for sight lines up above here. So if, if I had the bridge up here, I'd actually be higher than the waterfalls that are gonna be over in here. If I come down in here, now when there's photo opportunities, you see the waterfalls back behind me, which is really, really important. They're gonna have all kinds of weddings and different company events. And this is a huge nature trail that people are gonna use as they walk past these rock bluffs. And we wanna make sure all of these waterfalls are visible back behind the bridge. We get into this space, and this is where you, Jack, are gonna have a whole lot of fun. And the challenge for you is not gonna be just the safety of the machine sitting on a big slope like this, but also every time you go to get a rock, you don't have a whole lot of room to swing that arm back around to set this way. So every time you get a rock, you're gonna have to drive back out, all the way back up into there, go get a rock, swing back, and then drive back in this way. Every time we get to play with this grade, the idea is to dig it out, make it look like the water's eroded away the earth, leaving back behind big boulders. Here's where we really want to take advantage of twisting this stream, bringing it back over into this space here. So right in here, it gets a little tricky. Just behind me, we've gone ahead and painted out our second reservoir. This reservoir holds about 5,000 gallons. Where it gets tricky is we're pumping water from there to right about here. We have to make it look like these two are connected and that the water flows continuously down, but they're really two independent systems. Here is the beginning of another feature. So from here it goes, I think 140 feet back up and all the way around to here. <laughs> now between Brian and I, we've got over 50 years of experience building water features. This is going to be a difficult project. The way we happened upon this was the owner of the property actually watched one of my videos on YouTube on how to build a waterfall, like a small little waterfall, and he saw all that went into it and that kind of took him down the rabbit hole of watching more and more of our videos, seeing some of the bigger projects, and he's like, 
these are the guys I need out here. And that's the reason Brian and I are here in Texas. And the reason we've done projects like San Diego and all over the world is from our exposure of building water features for over two decades. If this project comes to fruition, it's going to be a really fantastic water feature. Probably the single most important thing we're gonna look for when we travel to look at a large project is rock sourcing and selection. It's crucial to the final outcome. If we've got the availability of large boulders, stuff that has a lot of character and it's indigenous, that makes for a really nice project. If we go to a location and we're kind of limited with our sourcing, sometimes we've got to bring stuff in from far away that could really impact the cost of the project. So we found this rock yard, WizQ Stone. What I love about this place is the enormous selection. And we need it because this water feature we're building is so unique. Because I love this stone, and I love the characteristics it has with the lichens, the little plants growing out of the natural high spots, the natural low spots. This might actually be too big in majority of the areas we're looking for. So we're probably looking for stuff that's more like this size in here, more of like a four foot by three foot area not a seven foot by five foot boulder. Now, if we can get a couple of these guys, I'd love them, but what's nice is they have a huge selection to go through. So we're gonna come through and actually tag over 200 different tons of stone throughout this whole space. The particular job we're going to be working on is overlooking a 7,000 acre lake which is surrounded on the shoreline by these large rock bluffs. Finding stone that can mimic some of what's in the, in the natural area is gonna be key to tying the whole project into the surrounding landscape. So in every project, we try to create destination areas, pe places that really invite the public to come and interact with the features. And that's gonna be done easy with rocks like this. It also matches some of the indigenous rock that's out there in the landscape. So if I put a big rock like this in that's flat, there's not a person in the world that can't resist coming up to it, standing on it. I wanna make it big enough that they can still do this and not feel like they're gonna fall into the pond. But I'm already picturing this sitting really close to maybe a waterfall with the waterfall coming back behind it, creating a great photo opportunity and a place for people to even maybe have the opportunity to kind of do this and dangle their feet in the water. Here we are, probably one of the best views of Grapevine Lake. So I think a big reason on why they're bringing us in is um, to just kind of reconnect people with nature. They realize that up here, not every sight line allows you views of this lake. And so by bringing in this big waterfall and stream, not only do people that are sitting here get views of nature, but they can also reconnect with nature over there by the stream. I think it's also gonna pull in a lot of kids, adults that wanna remember their childhood and hiking up and down rivers and waterfalls and that kind of stuff. And so part of what we're designing is gonna, of course, make sure that uh, the entire thing is very interactive. We want huge giant rock bluffs that cantilever out over the water, areas where people can sit on the boulders and dangle their feet in the water. Heck, if they want to get in and out of it, let them get in and out of it. So a big thing is um, the inspiration from the surrounding areas. Let's go check out uh, kind of these nature walks and uh, see if we can find some more inspiration. This is Grapevine Lake. It is absolutely gorgeous. My favorite part about this landscape are these sandstone bluffs. They just look amazing. The way the water has carved them out and you can see just big chunks have fallen into the water over time. The striations in the rock, you can see the different layers of strata in the hillside as you look up, starting from the bottom to the top and the hardness of the rock, even the type of rock changes. So this is all great inspiration when we're looking at recreating something in that ravine on the property. So we didn't have to walk very far to get some inspiration, right? Like look at all of these rock bluffs along this whole edge. It's just, it's amazing to see all of these different pieces that have fallen off. In fact, look at, see the dead tree over there? Like, come look at this. Tell me that's not a perfect bridge stone. We need to sneak down here and get that thing. <laughs> God, that is awesome. Hey, look at, somebody even put some measurements on it, three by eight. <laughs> what I love about seeing this is we've got ledge rock mixed in with some big boulders. Like there's actually some big, big boulders down in there. So we can get away with adding some ledge rock pieces up in our feature 
I could see doing something like this as a bridge. I can see doing something like this where we even cantilever a flat one out over some water, let that water kind of cut underneath it. And then we'll still be able to mix in some big giant boulders. Like look at these big pieces that have obviously split off the mountainside over here and tumbled their way down into the water. And then look at how mother nature has smoothed them off. So they're obviously used to be part of this. Found a fissure, snapped off due to erosion or whatever else. And then as that water is just pounded on them and pounded on them, slowly really smoothed them out. Probably a good idea of maybe the color gravel we should be trying to duplicate. I really like the way this ledge has been washed away and you can see it just comes right down to meet the water. I want to see us replicate that in some of the stream systems. Yeah, what we don't want to do is have boulders just on our vertical walls and then gravel on every horizontal plane. Some of the areas on the bottom of the stream, we want it to look like the water has eroded away the earth all the way down to solid bedrock like this. So if we can find some really massive flat pieces and put them in the bottom of our stream, duplicating this look, we'll win. <laughs> it's really amazing the opportunities that the exposure from social media and YouTube has afforded us as water feature builders for over two decades. Really thankful that we have these kind of opportunities and I'm super excited, number one, to work with you yeah. because you and I have a great synergy when we work together. A project of this scale is right up our alley. Yep. And we're going to have a great time because we're going to bring in some really talented people and have a lot of fun expressing our passion for water feature building and that's what you're going to see when we do this project at the end of 2020 here. So guys, thanks for checking us out today. Hit that subscribe button. Check out Team Aquascape. I'll link it down below. Leave me a comment. I want to know what you think about Brian and I, the projects we've done together, this traveling around, all these opportunities. We are truly blessed. We'll see you on the next one.